Hello everyone, welcome to the Maria Cosette Show where the left brain meets the right. Today I have a lovely guest. She's an entrepreneur and a fashion and beauty blogger, Chris Chéry. So stay with us for that great interview. And if you'd like more information about the show, you can always visit mariacosette.com slash television. Stay with us. I'm here with a very beautiful guest today. I love having this type of positive energy on my set. I'm here with entrepreneur and fashion and beauty blogger, Christine Ajabayan. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. So many of the people watching um, know you as Chris Chéry, Chéry yes. I should say, yeah. Where did, by the way, that come from? Um, Chéry, well, Chris, Christine, so it's just right. short. And then Chéry, I've just always been obsessed with French culture. Um, I love it. So Chéri means darling and I have family in France so every time I would go back Makes I would sense. always hear Chéri, Chéri, Chéri. So Chéri was just kind of something that I, it was like just like a pet, not a not a pet name I guess. But um, like a term of endearment. Yeah type it was of like thing. just like a um, social media handle that I would always right. use and then I thought it would be cute to just kind of like name my blog It that, is super so. cute. I love I it. And we match in our yeah. the Cosette and Chéri, so we're yeah. like, you know, perfect today. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about all the wonderful things you do and yeah. how you have business meet your creative side. So uh, how did you first, um, you know, find your interest in fashion and beauty and how did your venture begin and all of that? Okay. Um, with fashion, I mean, just with fashion and beauty, just like any girl, I've always, it's always been like something right. that I loved. Um, mainly fashion though, that was my thing. I went to FITM, studied design. Awesome. While I was in school, I was working full time. And um, I was working for Zara, and that was when Zara was kind of just like expanding in the West Coast. Right. Um, so I kind of helped with their expansions and stuff. Amazing. Um, and then once I graduated, I went into visuals. So I didn't really do design. I ended up getting a corporate job for Zara and ended up doing all their West Coast window displays. Wow. Um, which to like anyone, when you talk about that, people think like that's that's a dream job it's corporate job you finally got you know I, I was traveling I was doing all this stuff with it but right. I mean it was fun but I always kind of felt like something was missing um you know you always think about like okay what's next or is this something that I could do long term yeah and I had a blog but it was just something that I did for fun on the side um and then back then everything was through a website. So it wasn't really through social media. It was, right. you know, you have your website, you post things on Tumblr, you share photos like that. Um, so once social media kind of got to its peak or I saw that these girls who are into the same thing that I'm, that I'm into are able to like work with different brands. You're like and perfect. This yeah. Is perfect. Like, I mean, it, to me it was like, well, I'm seeing all these girls who share the same interests as I do and they're, able to have these opportunities that you know I never thought anyone can have unless like you actually work for a brand but they're right. able to work with different brands and do all this stuff with them so I sort of polished up my blog and thought about okay how can I make this something that I can eventually do long term and make it my livelihood right and it's so like that perfectly. yeah and for the first I mean I've been doing this for a little over four years now in the first two years it was a lot of, you know, still having a full-time job and doing this on the side and creating content on weekends. Tough. Yes. Um, so, like, creating enough content that, you know, look, I can post throughout the week and people think that I'm doing this throughout the week, but I'm really, you know, I have a nine-to-five like everyone else. Yeah. Um, to the point where I got comfortable enough where, you know, I can concentrate on it full-time and make it my job. Make it your thing. Pretty much. And actually yeah. you mentioned content. So that that's perfect because I wanted to ask you about that. Um, my friends and I are always wondering, um, you know, how do bloggers come up with daily content? It must be challenging. So I'm assuming that this is a pre-planned thing and yeah. you set out to discover new places and products to feature. So tell me a little bit about that. With that, I mean, I, I get a lot of people always tell me, you're always in a different outfit every day and you're always like, all you do is just, I feel like all you do is just take pictures every day and post it. And I wish that was all That's I was doing. And I, and I, the yeah, outside. exactly. And I, and I understand why people might think that because, you know, I, I am, yes, I am posting a different outfit every day, but I would say maybe 90% of the content is pre-planned 
and the other 10% is something that's more in, I guess, in the spur of the moment and right. real time and something that's a little bit more relatable with someone. Right. Um, why pre-plan is because a lot of the campaigns that I do with brands, everything needs to be pre-approved before it goes live. Right. So a brand has to approve it before anything's posted. So I can't just, you know, on the fly. Do yeah. Something. And, and everything has to be organized. So when, when I'm working with a brand and I'm doing a campaign, you know, they give me the theme of what they're looking for and it's up to me to create that for them. Um, so whether it's location, um, we, I put the outfits together. So they, they send me a line sheet and I'm the one who puts the outfits together. That's awesome. See, I didn't know that. And a lot yeah. of people don't know that. Yeah. That's amazing. So uh, again, based on what they're trying to sell for that season, I guess, or what they're trying to promote. So they'll right. send me a line sheet. I put the outfits together. I style everything. They give me the theme and it's up to me to scout the location, um, put everything together shoot the content, edit the content, send it to them, and they have to obviously approve it before anything is posted or right. not live. Um, so that's what we're doing majority of the time. And a lot of times when I'm posting something, if I post something tomorrow, that's prob that was probably shot two weeks ago. Right. And that's something that people don't understand. But of yeah. course, like you really don't understand how it all works until you're kind of... But that's the magic of it. it. You know, that's the yeah. magic of it. And it's okay for your followers not to completely understand all the yeah. work that goes into it. But that's why you're on this show, so you can explain it to yeah, them. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're talking about, you know, brands. Mm -hmm. And um, first of all, you rewind a little bit because I have to mention that I love your posts and your creativity and how you set up everything. And yeah, it's so cute. I love it. Very creative. Um, so about the brands. Yeah. Um, are you picky about the brands that you represent on your platform? Are there ones that you gravitate to more than others? Yes. So one thing I think everyone needs to realize, especially if you're, this is something that you want to get into, is you need to understand that you're, you yourself, you're also your brand. Right. So the type of companies that you choose to work with um, are also a reflection of who you are. Absolutely. So that's why I'm very picky with the type of, con the type of companies that I choose to work with. They it needs to be, whether it's fashion or beauty, they need to be brands that are, are aligned with who I am. Exactly. And, your values, your beliefs, everything. Yeah. yeah. And I've, I mean, I've been doing this for a while now where I know also what my followers like. So if I know that, you know, this is something that no one's really going to um, like anyway, or if, even if I don't like it, I don't want to push someone to buy a product um, that I don't like, that I haven't right. tried myself, that I don't believe in. Um, so if I know that this is something that people would like, then yeah, definitely 100%. But um, if, I, if I've tried it myself, because with a lot of beauty stuff, you know, you try it yourself to actually see if it works. Yeah. Um, if I don't feel like this is something that um, is not going to work, then I try to, you know, stay steer true away. to myself. Yeah. And, and steer away um, from it at least choose products that I know people are going to like as well. Yeah. And I'm so. always like uh, private messaging you and asking yeah. <laughs> you tips. I love it. No, I love it. I get that all the time too. And I, yeah. I like it. I honestly, I, I like when people do that because I feel like I'm doing, then I'm doing something right. Absolutely. Um, that means they're engaged and, yeah. and you're so responsive and sweet about it. So I yeah. love it. Yeah. And I, I love that, like, especially with, I guess, bloggers and influencers, we are regular people. So, you know, when you see a celebrity posting something, you know that they're, they're most likely pushing an ad. So it's right. just an advertisement. It's a commercial. Yeah. But um, with us, we're, we're like regular people like anyone right. else. And these are actually products that I've tried and that I like. And um, a lot of times when I'm sharing things on my stories, I'm not even trying to, I'm not even working with the company. It's actual right. products that you I actually just love. like it. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So. Well, I have a lot more to chat with you yeah. about. Um, you're watching the Maria Cosette show and I'm here with Chris Sherry. You can follow her on IG. Um, Chris, K-R-I-S-C-H-E-R-I-E. -E. Stay with us. Seven Q Spa Laser and Aesthetic Center has opened its doors to their new location in Glenda, a luxurious space offering cutting edge technologies, including laser hair removal for men and women, all injectables and fillers, Botox, Restylane, Kybella, Juvederm Ultra Plus, and all other variations, Pedio Thread Lift, PRP Facial with Mesotherapy and Microneedling. Visit their new location, 7Q Spa Laser and Aesthetic Center. Hey everyone, you're back with the Maria Cosette Show and I'm here with my lovely guest, Chris Cherry. 
So um, I've loved our interview so far. I've actually learned a lot from you. Awesome. So that's good for me as a female. And so let's talk about how your business acumen, being an entrepreneur, building your brand, mm -hmm. how has that nurtured your creative side? That, it's, it's funny. I've never um, seen my, before all this, I never saw myself as the type to be an entrepreneur. I was very set on having a nine to five, working for someone, being on someone's salary, I guess just being comfortable. Right. Um, so, and I've just always been a creative person. So the fact that like, okay, how do I mix the two together? Be an entrepreneur, be very business minded, also be creative was terrifying. Um, but it got to a point where it was like, okay, I know this is what I want to do. And my goal is to do this full time. So I had to strate strategically put myself in a position to see like, okay, how, what can I do to be able to do this long term? Right. And a lot in the beginning, it was a lot of trial and error. And it was trying things to see what worked. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm doing something, but people are not reacting the same way. So that, that was me. Okay, this is my creative side. This is me doing something. And then the whole business side to see like what, what's actually working and what's not. Right. And in the beginning, of, you know, I, I had mentioned earlier, I did for two years, I did this part time while I had a full time job. Yeah. So when I made all the mistakes, it was good to make them in the beginning. And I, and I still make mistakes, but it was good to have, I guess, something in the something behind me where even if I make a mistake in this, you know, this is not my livelihood completely. I still have something keeping me going until I can figure out what works and work, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I think that's what it was. And then now I'm comfortable to the point where I know what actually works and what doesn't. And You've done I, it very yeah, well. And I apply it. Yeah, absolutely. Entrepreneurship is all about taking risks. So yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk about, um, you know, what posts do you find work best? Which ones, you know, create the most traffic between your platforms or, you know, which ones are people more attracted to, maybe comment more, like more, whatever the case may be. Beauty. Beauty, really? Yeah. It's, it's funny. People just love watching you, one, like how to put on makeup, what products you use, like even just to see like the end result of right. like how did you do this. People just love it. I don't know. So it, you'd say beauty your beauty does, posts as opposed to the fashion posts. Yeah, beauty drive does a more. lot more better. Probably because we have to do so much as women when it comes to beauty, as far as makeup, the right facial skincare, everything. You know, you know it's funny. In the, um, I used to always say, I don't know how many girls I can watch putting, you know, doing a makeup tutorial. But I'm one of those people who just get hooked. I sit down and I can't stop watching. Um, so I think it's, it just applies to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, good to know. Um, and, and I mean, you've created such a strong platform, so it's really interesting to people, even a, as a marketer mm -hmm. or anybody, uh, you know, in that type of realm, it's interesting for them to know what type of yeah. posts work best for you, you know? Yeah. Um, so where do you see yourself five years from now? What are your aspirations? I hopefully, I mean, when I started this, like, like, I, like I mentioned, I did design, so I've always wanted to have my own line. And hopefully, I eventually will. I'm hoping that I can actually like at least do a capsule collection with one of the brands that I work That'd with. Awesome. So that's a goal. Um, or eventually having my own line. And I feel like you know having that following and people people knowing like what I like and what I do. You build that relationship with people, so people trust you more and yes. will like your products a lot more. Um, but I'm also really involved in the Armenian community. I think I I always share stuff. So. Um, I also want to still continue to do that and raise awareness for certain issues that I really care about. Um, and one of my big time goals, and I, I don't know how this would be possible, but something that I want Nothing to do is... Nothing is impossible. <laughs> thank you. Um, I want production to come out of Armenia. That would be amazing. So if I can, if, if it's, you know, eventually my own line or whatever it is. Right. I think not, not having it made anywhere else, but having it come out of Armenia to create jobs or, you know... Like, why not? Yeah, there's so, so much amazing talent to cultivate yeah. from Armenia, especially right now. The the youth, especially, they're so awake and, yeah. 
Yeah, very talented. So, yeah, that would be great. That's a goal. <laughs> um, and I have noticed that you do utilize your platform to, you know, to raise awareness, whether it's about the genocide or other yeah. issues that um, speak to you. And so with that said, I have noticed and I admire you for that, um, for keeping your content very PG. I guess that would be the word for it. Um, so why do you think it's important to utilize your platform to be a good role model for younger girls? This sort of goes back to my answer with why I choose the brands that I work with. Um, again, it's, you know, the type of content that I'm putting out is representing who I am as a person. Right. So I'm going to put out content um, that whatever I put out is what I'm going to attract. So, you know, I'm very Parisian or like, I, that's just who I am. I'm, I'm not trying to be anyone else. Like the, the, the type of content that I put out is really just Very who I authentic, am. yes. Um, so that's really just me being me. It's not even me trying to be someone. And um, I'm, I'm very editorial in high fashion. And those are the type of companies that I want to work with. So I try to, you know, stay in that um, field, I guess. Right, right. And in terms of being a good role model, I think with social media right now, it's a blessing and it's a curse. And it's a curse because I think a lot of young girls look at, you know, yeah. what everyone's posting and they constantly want to compare themselves and be like that. So I always try to um, basically tell girls, because I always get a lot of girls, a lot of girls from Armenia will DM me and it's so sweet because they, they're always trying to ask, you know, what to do and all that stuff. But I think the bigger message is them understanding that they can do anything just by being themselves and they don't have to compare themselves to someone else or well try to be said. like someone. They yeah. can, you know, they can do anything their own way and they don't necessarily have to be, they don't have to look that way or they don't have to dress that way. You can make something out of yourself. Right. Have um, your own interpretation yeah. of it. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, and so I must ask you the question I ask all my guests. Why is it important to have a creative outlet? For me... My creative outlet, it's important for me because it allows me to be, one, someone that I never thought I could be. Um, again, like I've never been the entrepreneur type. So the fact that I, I've always been creative and the fact that I kind of made this something that I can do long term and enjoy. Right. What a blessing. Um, yeah. So th it's, that's why it's important to me. But I think for anyone else, it's, it just gives you a purpose, I guess. Um, if you have a full-time job, if, if it's an office setting or whatever it is, I think having a creative outlet is a form of escape for some people. Yes. So it really just depends on like what you're doing. Yeah, and you're actually mm -hmm. a very unique guest of mine, I must say, because um, generally speaking, people come here that have business acumen or mm -hmm. are um, in the administrative realm or mm -hmm. even like healthcare, whatever the case may be. But um, they have a creative outlet, but you're blessed enough to have made your creative outlet yeah. your your thing and mm -hmm. be an entrepreneur and pursue that fully. So kudos to you. Thank you, um, thank you so much for of being course. here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this absolutely. I loved it. And so stay with us. Um, and of course, once again, follow Chris Sherry if you're not already <laughs> doing so, which I'm sure you are, especially all the uh, young bright eyed ladies at K R I S C H E R. I.E. Stay with us. The Art of Giving, where we spotlight a charitable organization. And I'm especially proud to spotlight this one because I had a chance to work with them this past trip to Armenia. Together for Armenia brings together professionals from all around the world to invest the greatest asset we have, knowledge. Armenia, especially with its recent revolution, has flourished in so many ways. There is a greater demand for advancement, a need for growth, and endless opportunities. In fact, in my recent visit, I discovered an entirely new country, so different from what I had witnessed before, and I'm so happy to see that change. The main driving factor, happy to say, was its youth, many of which work with the organization. Together for Armenia is a free intellectual volunteering web platform that is bridging the gap between local initiatives with immense potential and professionals from every corner of the world are getting involved. The project was launched in 2016 by the shared vision of UNICEF in Armenia and AGBU with the support of the European Union. It has hosted more than 50 experts and approximately 80 workshops in the communities of Armenia, 
benefiting more than 2,000 Armenian citizens thus far. Today, we spotlight Alanush Terian, who was an Iranian-Armenian astronomer and physicist. She is called the mother of modern Iranian astronomy. She graduated from the University of Tehran and went on to become the chief of laboratory operations in the same year. Despite objections from men stating that there was a limit for women to study extensively, Derian ventured out to France to continue her education, where she obtained her doctorate in atmospheric physics. She returned to Iran and became the professor of thermodynamics and in 1964 became the first female professor of physics in Iran. She was one of the founders of the Solar Observatory and was tasked with leading the Solar Physics Research Group at Tehran University. Derian retired after teaching for 30 years and dedicated her house to accommodating the Armenian students in Julfa, who did not have proper housing. That's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in. Much love to my guest today, Chris Cherry, entrepreneur and fashion and beauty blogger. To find out more about our show and just to reach out to me, why not? Email info at mariacosette.com. Now in the true meaning of fashion, I'll strike a pose. Goodbye. Goodbye.